What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do bookkeeping for a trucking company. I have no idea how long this is going to be, but I'm going to take you literally start to finish. I'm going to do an entire year, the entire year of 2022 bookkeeping for a trucking company. I'm going to use my trucking company. It's a real company that I had. I'm going to use the real transactions that I had in my checking account and my credit card. I'm going to go step by step how to set up the account in QuickBooks how to categorize the transactions, how to reconcile everything, generate the financial statements, literally step by step. And I'm making this video because I want to teach you how to do bookkeeping. So you might be a trucking company owner and I'm going to teach you how to do bookkeeping or maybe you're a bookkeeper trying to start a bookkeeping business and this is going to be perfect training for you on how to do bookkeeping with QuickBooks. All right, this is going to be a long video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is my QuickBooks account, and this is for my bookkeeping business, Harrisburg Bookkeeping. So what you're going to do in the top right-hand corner of your QuickBooks account, and this is if you have a bookkeeping business, you're going to add a client by clicking that button in the top right-hand corner, add the client, and then whatever their name is. So their business name for this particular company, Route 20, we'll say TC, Route 20 Trucking Company, and we'll say Route 20 at gmail.com and then we'll say the phone number is 717-448-5675 just a random phone number that i made up okay so if you have a bookkeeping business here's how you add a client to your quickbooks account so you just need their business name their email address and their phone number okay now for the subscription you can do a pro advisor discount or you can do direct discount or you can do revenue revenue share with the pro advisor discount they get a 30 percent discount for the life of the subscription but quickbooks will bill you as the bookkeeping business owner if they choose to bill your client who is the trucking company owner now with this direct discount your the the trucking company business owner is paying for it and you pass through a 30% discount for the next 12 months. So for the first 12 months, they get a 12, 30% discount. But if you build a firm, if you build a bookkeeping business owner, the 30% discount is for the life of the subscription. Or you can do a revenue share and you as the bookkeeper will receive 30% of the amount billed to your client for the first 12 months. So we'll do revenue share. It doesn't matter. I'm not actually setting up an account. You have three options. You have four options. Simple start, essentials, plus advanced. I always start everybody at essentials. I think that's the best QuickBooks program. We're not going to do payroll, but you can sign up for payroll if you want. And I never check this box. I always make the business owner the primary admin. So that's it. Just click save. And now we have created a QuickBooks subscription for your client. Now, your client, the email address that you submitted whenever you added this client, that email address will receive an invitation from QuickBooks. It's very important that your client take that email and log in because they have their own separate QuickBooks login account. So you as the bookkeeper have your own account and your client has their own account. Okay, so now that we've created the account, now we just need to log in to their QuickBooks account. So now we are in the trucking company QuickBooks account. And as soon as you log in, they're probably going to ask you a couple questions. None of these really matter a whole lot. The legal business name is Route 20 TC. Whatever it is, you can leave the industry blank. You can leave this blank. Just click next if you want or fill in the industry. It doesn't really matter. It's important if it's a sole prop or a partnership or a corporation, identify what type of business it is. It should be pretty obvious. Provide services. You know, you either sell products or you provide services. And then you can skip all this. Just click done and you can move on. Now, the first thing I recommend everybody do every single time is connect your bank account. So the very first thing you need to do is go over to banking on the left hand side. And if yours, if your QuickBooks looks different than mine, click the gear icon in the top right hand corner up here. It might say switch to accountant view. So if it doesn't say switch to business view, then go ahead and click this button and it'll switch you to accountant view and then your screen will look exactly the same as mine. Okay, so go to banking. This is the first thing I always do. You need to connect your accounts. So click on banking, click on connect account. And here is where you are going to choose the bank. So for my trucking company, I used Orstown. 
Okay, type in the username and password, click on sign in, go through whatever security features there might be. QuickBooks pretty much always asks for some type of two-factor authentication. So if you're logging into your client's business account, make sure that whatever phone number or email address you have access to it or you have access to your client so that they can give you the code. Enter in the code, click on continue, and then now QuickBooks is connecting to your business checking account. So if you have multiple accounts, then click on whichever account you want to connect. And then this is really important. Here we're going to select a date to pull transactions from. So in this example, I'm doing all of the bookkeeping for 2022. If you were just doing the bookkeep bookkeeping for 2023, then maybe you would just choose this year, but I'm going to choose last year. And now this is important, choose the account type. So if this is a credit card, obviously a credit card, but this is a checking account. So we will choose checking and then you can name it whatever you want. I typically like to name it, um, you know, Orstown checking. Sometimes you can include like the last four digits of the account number. Or if you only have one checking account, you can just name it checking account. It really doesn't matter how you name it as long as it makes sense to you. Okay, now the money is coming in, the transactions are coming in. So this is just a mirror image of your bank account. It's just pulling in the details of your bank. So you don't actually have the ability to move or transfer any money through your bank account by using QuickBooks. QuickBooks is simply connecting the transaction details and pulling in the data. Okay, so you can link another account. So in this example, we're going to link an American Express credit card and every account is different. So it might not look exactly like this. And you might need to ask your client to help you enter in their credentials. But this is a really important step to getting your bank accounts and your credit cards connected. That way you don't have to do manual data entry because that would literally take forever. So you want to pull in these transactions. And once again, we're doing for the entire year of 2022. So choose the account, choose the date, and then click next. This is a credit card. So we have the account type that's correct. And then you can name it whatever you want. Amex credit card. Now QuickBooks, once again, connecting to the credit card, pulling in the transaction details. This is going to make the entire year of bookkeeping much more simple. Okay, so now we have all of these transactions. We have all the details from the transactions in our QuickBooks bank feed. And I will show you real quick, if you're not able to link the accounts directly, you can click on this down arrow right here. You can upload from files. So you can upload a CSV file or a QBO file. You can download a QBO file directly from your bank. Every bank is different. So there is no one way to do it. You're gonna to have to work with your bank on downloading the transaction details from the bank, or you can download them into an Excel file. You just need to make sure that it's formatted correctly. So you need to have four columns. You need to have the date and in this order, date, description, money spent, money received. Have those four columns, and then you can upload your CSV file and import your transaction data that way. Oftentimes, if you're doing an entire year of bookkeeping, you will need to do this because most accounts only pull data from the last 90 days. So if you need to pull data for the entire year, you might need to log into the bank or credit card account directly, export the data, and then import it manually into QuickBooks. Okay, now we have over 600 transactions that need to be categorized. And I am about to do all of these transactions. For the sake of time, I might not do every single one, but I am at least going to show you how to do the majority of this bookkeeping. So this is about to be a long video, very dry, but if you're a business owner or a bookkeeper, this is about to be extremely helpful. I'm going to teach you how to do bookkeeping for a trucking company. And if you have a different company that you want me to do this tutorial for, like a different industry, let me know in the comments if you have a software company or a construction company or a real estate investor or a restaurant or a marketing agency, any industry you want, I will create a tutorial for that specific industry. And also if you need help with your bookkeeping or starting your business, I have a link in the description 
Use that link. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I'm already mentoring three different people on how to start a bookkeeping business in less than 30 days with no experience. I'm teaching everybody exactly what I've learned over the past three years. That way you can fast track and start and grow your successful bookkeeping business. Okay, so the first thing I do is I click this little gear icon right here and I choose to show 300 transactions. That just makes it easier for me to see the transactions. And let's go ahead and sort by description. So this is going to make it easy to categorize transactions in bulk. Now, this is my company, so I know all of the answers to my questions. But if you are a bookkeeper working for somebody else, you're going to have a ton of questions. So for this example, I'm just going to act like I know all of the answers. But if there's ever a transaction that you don't know about, like let's say, for example, on February 17th, 2022, you see here account transfer PSCCU. You're like, what is that? I don't know. So you're going to have to ask your client what this is. So create an Excel spreadsheet or open up an, an email and just simply write down the bank transaction detail and say, hey, on February 17th, you transferred $278.80 and the bank memo says this. What was that transaction? You're going to have to do that every single time you have a question. Never make stuff up. Never take shortcuts. Don't incorrectly categorize things just to save time and move quickly. Always try to get the right answer. And you typically need two things whenever you're trying to categorize a transaction. You need to know who did you pay, who's the vendor, and what's the category. And we don't really have any categories right now, but I'm going to show you how to create categories, how to create vendors. That way you can accurately do all of your bookkeeping. So right off the bat, I know, for example, this was owner's pay. So anytime you transfer money from your business checking account to your personal checking account, that is an equity transaction that's owner's pay. So we don't have it here. So I'm going to go add new account type. We're going to choose equity and then the detail type QuickBooks gives you a bunch of options and we're going to choose owner's equity. And we can see here S corporations use owner's equity to show the cumulative net income or loss of their business as of the beginning of the fiscal year. We're going to choose partner distributions for this one, and we can just name it owner's pay. And then once you have the account name created, click save and close, and then you can create a vendor. I generally always recommend create a vendor, except sometimes whenever it's owner's pay, I won't add a vendor. So just click add. Okay, now you can see here QuickBooks does something really cool. If you have two accounts, and they're transferring money back and forth to each other, QuickBooks will automatically pick up on that transfer. So you can see here that these are all transfers from my checking account paying off my credit card, and QuickBooks automatically picks up on that. So you can select all of these transactions. Once we have all of these transactions selected, all of the ones that have this green paired to another transaction, we can just click Accept. Now QuickBooks has automatically matched the transfer from the checking account to the credit card. So we categorized it on both sides. It makes it so easy. But QuickBooks did not pick up on these five, these right here, because you can see it's 1,000 and 1,000. So this was confusing for QuickBooks because it's the exact same amount. So they weren't sure what was going on here. So we're gonna have to manually, we can select all three of these and we can update. And we know that they all went to American Express. We can click on the transaction type and say it was a transfer. And the category is Amex credit card. So this is telling QuickBooks that we are transferring money from the checking account to the Amex credit card account. And I can see here that it happened in February and March. And now we can go back to the Amex account. Okay, so now we have gone to the American Express credit card account on the bank feed, and we can see here that we have these three transactions that were received from the checking account, but it's really important that we click on this transaction because we've already categorized it on the checking account side. So now we need to click on find match. So we'll click find match, and then we can see here that we transferred money and it shows up here. So this is a transaction that's already been categorized on the checking account side, and we just need to match the transaction on the credit card side. So we'll, we'll match that, click save. It's really important that you don't add it twice 
because that's going to mess up your book. So you need to match transactions that have already been added on one side. Now we're just going to do the same thing for these two transactions. Just double check, make sure the date lines up. March 2nd, March 3rd, as long as it's within one or two days, that looks like a match. You can see here the other transfer was from February 28th, but that's probably not the match. So we'll do March 3rd. I, I noticed that credit cards always receive the money one day before it actually leaves the checking account. So it's always going to show up on the credit card account one to two days before it shows up on the checking account. Okay, now let's go back to the checking account. Okay, now we just have these small amounts, 38 cents, but then also the same day we have 33 and 5 cents. So I know that this was just a bank verification. So these transactions really don't even matter, but I like to include every single transaction. So I will update this and I will just categorize this as bank charges. It makes no difference because it's the exact same amount coming in and going out. So it will have a net effect of zero, but go to expenses and we need to create a new category called bank charges. Save and close and apply and accept. So we just categorized all three of those transactions as bank deposits. Now we have this transfer to loan account. So once again, we can highlight all of these transactions. We can click update, transaction type. We can do expense. And I know that I have a loan with Orstown Bank. So I'm gonna create a new vendor called Orstown Bank. Really important, check up here, make sure that the contact type is correct, whether it's a vendor or a customer company name you can add as much details as you want but for now we're just going to add Orstown Bank and I know for example this was the trailer loan for my semi truck now you're probably not going to know this so you're gonna to have to ask your client but if you're the business owner you probably already know this is a long-term liability notes payable we can just call it trailer loan you can call it whatever you want just make sure that you have the account type as long-term liability so now this is just a transfer from your checking account to your loan account. So this transaction in and of itself is not going to show up on your profit and loss statement. It's not going to be an expense. It's a balance sheet transaction. It's just a transfer from your checking account to your loan account. We will need to split the interest and the principal on that transfer. I'm not going to go over those details right now just for the sake of time, but just know anytime you pay off a loan, you need to separate the interest and the principal. Okay, now this is paying off my Chase credit card. Once again, for the sake of time, I did not connect my Chase credit card. So in this example, I will show you, you, can, you actually don't technically need to itemize your credit card transactions if you don't want to. As long as everything that you're using that credit card for is a business expense, then we could technically just categorize these transfers from the checking account to the credit card as an expense in and of itself. So this makes your bookkeeping a lot easier, a lot faster, but a lot less accurate. I never recommend doing it, but if you really want to do it, a great example is if you're using the credit card for the same thing over and over again, like let's just say, for example, I was always using my Chase card to pay my insurance bill, then we could use the, the Chase card here. We'll name the vendor Chase Credit Card just because I always recommend that you have a vendor for every single transaction. And then we can actually label this category as insurance. So this isn't completely accurate because on the other side of this transaction, there was a credit card that was actually paying progressive for the insurance. So this is not the actual insurance payment. This is simply us paying off the credit card but I know that this credit card was used exclusively for insurance. So we could technically just categorize this transfer as the expense and not even worry about itemizing the credit card. Once again, I don't recommend doing this, but it's just for example, if you want to do it, you technically probably could do it. Wouldn't recommend doing it, but I just wanted to show you how to do it. Okay, now this is money received and I can see here that it was received from Harrisburg Bookkeeping. And I know that that was owner's investment. So typically, whenever you receive money, it's one of three things, either income, a loan, or owner's investment. So I like to differentiate between owner's pay and owner's investment. So we're going to create a new category, equity, and we're going to call it contributions, owner's investment. I'm not quite sure why it's showing up as partner distributions and partner contributions. This is not a partnership. 
I, I would actually maybe just call it owner's equity. The detail type really isn't super important. What is important is that you get the account type right and you get the name that makes the most sense. So this is technically owner's investment because I'm the owner and I put money into my business. It's really important that you don't categorize this as income. If you incorrectly categorize a loan or owner's investment as income, that means you're going to have to pay taxes on that income. So you want to avoid incorrectly categorizing money received. Super important. Okay, now another cool thing. So we see here all this bill paid Alex. So I know Alex was my driver, but just in case maybe, and this is sorted alphabetically, but let's just say, for example, we want to make sure that we capture all of the transactions that went to Alex. We can type in Alex right here. We can search for Alex. And now these are all of the transactions that went to Alex. So we can just select all of these. We can click update. We know this was an expense. We know the payee was Alex. Add new. Now, if this was your actual books, you're going to want to make sure you add in all of these details. So first and last. So not, not a company. This is important. Not the company but first name because this is a person. Okay, Alex Jones, so not a company, but a person. If you were paying a company, make sure you say that it's a company. But since this is a person, we're gonna say Alex Jones. You can add his email address. You can add his mailing address. You can add an attachment. Really important, if he's a 1099 contractor, right here, add in his social security number and check this box, track payments, for 1099 that way whenever you run your report at the end of the year you can run your report for 1099s and you can actually file and send your 1099s directly through quickbooks makes it so super simple okay so alex jones and then i don't think we have a category for that so now we're going to add a new category he was my driver so he's it's an expense um we can call it cost of labor or we can call it driver or you can call it independent contractor or you can call it contractor labor it really doesn't matter what you call it as long as you're consistent and as long as it makes sense so driver independent contractor contractor labor all of those are good categories for your driver if you're paying him as an independent contractor getting a 1099 okay now you can see here that's 16 transactions that we just categorized with the click of a couple buttons so that's why it's really simple to use QuickBooks Online with the bank feed to do a bulk number of transactions all at once. Here is another driver, Alvin. Once again, you can just search Alvin. And QuickBooks is automatically pulling up this information because I used ACH direct deposit straight from my checking account and I paid these drivers. So this information is already in the bank details of my transaction. So I'm able to see because I use the ACH direct deposit, I can see who I paid. Now, if you're giving people checks or paying people with PayPal or Venmo or Zelle, it might not necessarily give the person who you're paying, it might not give their information on the bank details. So you might have a couple extra steps. Like if you're paying people with a check, you're gonna have to look at every single individual check to find out who did you pay. That makes this process a lot more difficult that's why I always recommend set up ACH direct deposit. Now this is another driver. We'll just say Alvin Jones again. And then this is contractor labor. Here's a good example. So here's what the bank detail looks like. So if we click on the individual transaction, we can see here all of the bank details. Bill paid Carl Shipman. He was my dispatcher. So I'm going to search for Carl just to make sure we get all of the transactions going to Carl. And I paid him every single week, pretty consistently. You can see there are 49 transactions in 2022. So almost every single week, we can update that expense. We have to create a new payee. So every single time you're adding a new payee, go ahead and create that. Make sure you get their W-9 if they are a 1099 contractor, get their W-9, that way you can pay them properly. And that way you can give them a 1099 at the end of the year, Carl Shipman. And now he was also kind of like an independent contractor, but he was my dispatcher. And because it's a trucking company, because that's a very specific expense to a trucking company, I'm going to create a new category just for dispatcher. So you could technically just lump that together with your driver and just label it all independent contractor or contractor labor but I'm going to differentiate between my driver and my dispatcher. So I'm gonna call that a dispatcher category. 
All right, once again, we have here Bill Paid Harrisburg Bookkeeping. So this was just another transfer from my, from one business to another business. So this is an equity transfer. Owner's pay has nothing to do with my revenue or my expenses, just because we are transferring money from one business to another business that I own. So that's the same concept as transferring money from your business account to your personal account. You can also transfer money from your business account to another business account. Just categorize it as owner's pay. Okay, now all of these transfers here to what's called CDL Labor Management, they were my staffing agency. So I would actually, just because I know what this was, I would treat this differently and I would split this transaction. So I'm not gonna do it for every single one just for the sake of time, but I'm gonna show you one example because we have two things going on in this one transaction. So we can split the transaction and we're going to say that we paid CDL labor management, add them as a company. Now we have two categories here. So we have driver and then we also have staffing agency fees because they charged me not only for the cost of driving, but they upcharged me on the staffing agency fees. So I'm gonna add a new category and they gave me an invoice every week so I would know exactly how much it was, but just for this example, I'm going to say that it was $1,800 for, for the actual driver and then an upcharge of the remainder of $503.71. And then if I were you, I would add an attachment. So if you got an invoice from your staffing agency, or from your repairman, or from your insurance company, you can add an attachment to every single transaction. So this is how you split a transaction between two separate categories. So if I look at my p and I will see this one $2,300 split between driver and staffing agency fees, two separate line items on the profit and loss statement. For the sake of time, I'm just going to categorize all of these as driver, so it's getting a little bit redundant now, but expense, payee, category, simple as that. All right, now we have fleet core funding. So for this example, I'm let's just say maybe I'm not entirely sure what this means. So I can just highlight fleet core funding, open up a new, new tab. And if I don't know what fleet core funding is, then I can do a quick Google search. And then you can go to the business's website and you can find out who it was. But for this example, I know who this was. This was Fuelman. So another company, Fuelman. And this was vehicle fuel. This was fuel for my truck. So if you are not a trucking company, you're probably going to categorize this differently. But for a trucking company, I categorize vehicle fuel as supplies and materials. But if you just have like a marketing agency, and you go to the gas station to fill up fuel for your car, then that would be a completely different idea of a transaction. But for a trucking company, since our industry is transportation and trucks and fuel, this is supplies and materials for my trucks. So we're gonna say fuel man, vehicle fuel. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And now this is the easiest, fastest way to do it. Once again, I recommend if you are doing your bookkeeping for your own business, or if you have a client and they want you to attach documents to individual transactions, that is probably a smart idea. So for Fuelman, whenever I did my bookkeeping in real life, in real time, every single week I got an invoice from Fuelman. So I would be doing my bookkeeping in real time and I would be attaching that invoice to every single transaction. But for this example, I'm not gonna do it for every transaction for the sake of time. I just wanna show you the, the best way to do your bookkeeping as quickly as possible. So here we can select all of these transactions and we can double check the payee and the category all looks accurate and we just click accept. Just like that, we've categorized 19 transactions as vehicle fuel. So you can see here, as long as a business has some level of consistency, the bookkeeping can get really pretty simple, especially whenever you're doing a large number of transactions, like an entire year of a cleanup for bookkeeping. Okay, now all of this business mobile deposit, this was just checks that were deposited into my account. And these might be different for you or your client. But for this example, I'm, I'm pretty confident that all of these mobile deposits were just owner's investment, but it might be services and sales. 
So let's say every mobile deposit is income. So we're going to categorize that as sales income. We're just going to say it was deposit. I don't necessarily give a customer for every bank deposit. I only necessarily do a vendor for every expense. But if it's a bank deposit, I just categorize it as sales. You can get a lot more detailed with categorizing your sales by creating sales receipts and invoices. That is a whole extra layer of complexity for your bookkeeping, and that takes a lot more time. So if your client wants you to create invoices and create sales receipts, you're going to want to charge them a lot more to do their bookkeeping. Okay, here we have Capital One. So similar to my Chase credit card, I also had a Capital One credit card. So we're just gonna search here for Capital One. So this is a good example where the not all of the Capital One credit cards showed up in order. Like for example, this mobile Capital One, like alphabetically did not show up in order with Capital One. So that's why sometimes I like to search for the keywords in the bank details and that pulls up all the transactions. That way I can highlight all of them, click update. And once again, I would recommend that you itemize every single credit card you have, but for the sake of time, we will just say that this was all, we'll just call it repairs and maintenance. We're gonna add a new category for Capital One, expense, repair and maintenance, apply and accept. Okay, now these are all of my deposits from my factoring company. So I used TAFs as my factoring company. Now I did a journal entry for every deposit from my factoring company, but if you just want to quickly recognize your income from your factoring company, then you can just look for all of the deposits from your factoring company. As you can see here, there were quite a few of them. We can select all of these deposits from Trans Am Financial, and then we can just click update and then we can say it's a deposit and this was all sales. Now keep in mind you are going to want to recognize the factoring fee because you just received the net after the factoring company took out the fees. So if you actually ran a load for $1,000, you probably only got $950. So you want to recognize that 3 or 4% factoring fee. That way your top line revenue matches potentially the 1099s that you're going to get. Same concept applies if you're working with Stripe, you might have received a payment and then Stripe took out that 3% payment processing fee to process the credit card. So you want to make sure that you capture all of the top line revenue and then take out the, the factoring fees or the Stripe fees or the QuickBooks payment processing fees. Okay, now this was also income. So we're going to categorize that as sales. And you can see here that it's just been... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and we've almost categorized all of my transactions from 2022. I had a pretty small trucking company. I just had one truck and one driver, so pretty small operation, but you can see here, you can get a lot done pretty quickly. Okay, this is going to be a good example. We're gonna look at this deposit here from January 14th for $45,000. Now, I remember that was a truck loan. So $45,000, so we're gonna go here, account type, long-term liabilities, the same thing we did with the trailer loan, but this is money that we received. So you can see it's really important that you don't classify that as income because you're gonna have to pay taxes if you incorrectly categorize that as income. So if you received a large sum of money as a loan, make sure you categorize that as a long-term liability. Here is another example. So this $25,000, that was for my trailer loan. So we're gonna categorize that as the trailer loan. And we're just transferring money from the trailer loan to the checking account. So now we're increasing the balance of the trailer loan while simultaneously increasing the balance of our checking account through cash, through a transfer of cash. And then this here, 33,000, this is whenever I actually bought the trailer. So whenever you, whenever you buy an asset, you need to categorize it correctly. So it's not an expense, it's a fixed asset. So here we have the account type is fixed asset and then it's machinery and equipment, and we're gonna call it trailer. If you have multiple trailers, you can give them numbers or unit numbers, it doesn't matter, but for this example, we're just gonna call it a trailer. So now we're transferring money from our checking account to an asset account. So if you look at our balance sheet, now we're going to have an asset of a trailer for $33,511. This is super important. I see people incorrectly categorizing their loans and their assets all the time.
Here is the other payment. This is $57,000. This is whenever I bought my truck. So we'll say truck 001. And this is a fixed asset and it's a vehicle. The name is truck 001. So now we have on our books a trailer and a truck as an asset. And then the way you capture the expense of the asset is you run depreciation. You're going to run depreciation with your tax accountant or your CPA. There are a dozen different ways to run depreciation. You can use Section 179. You can use bonus depreciation. You can use straight line depreciation. There are a ton of different ways to capture depreciation. Make sure you talk to your tax accountant or your CPA about that. Okay, here we have if the tax. So every single, every quarter, I think, I'm not sure what this is, but it's Pennsylvania if the tax. So whenever I paid my if the tax, I actually just categorized that as fuel. So I said that I paid the PA Department of Revenue because that's who you're paying for the IFTA tax. Make sure it's a vendor. But I didn't categorize it as taxes or licenses. I just categorized it as vehicle fuel. Okay, I'm going to stop showing you guys the checking account. Now I'm going to move to the credit card account. For the sake of time, I don't think I'm going to have enough time. And I'm sure nobody is even still watching this video. But I really want to show you guys kind of start to finish how you would do real bookkeeping for a real trucking company. So this is going to be so credit cards are a lot more straightforward typically than checking accounts because checking accounts you have assets you have income you have expenses you have loans you have owners investment owners pay but credit cards are usually pretty straightforward it's usually just a bunch of expenses so for here we have Amazon so if you're doing this bookkeeping for a client you might want to ask them hey what did you buy at Amazon but I'm just going to assume that all of my Amazon expenses were job supplies. Job supplies is a pretty broad category. I use it for all of my clients. Typically anything that's not office supplies, I would categorize that as job supplies. And now you can be as detailed as you want. So we're doing an entire year of bookkeeping right now. So time is of the essence. But if you're doing your bookkeeping in real time, by all means, be as detailed as you'd like with the the bank detail, the memo, adding attachments. The more detail you provide, the better. Here's another good example, Easy Pass. So we have here 33 transactions for Easy Pass. So just type in the vendor. And then for this, I like to do a category called parking and tolls. The detail type really doesn't matter. Just make sure the name makes sense and you're consistent. So every time you pay Easy Pass, make sure you categorize that as parking and tolls or whatever you call it. Okay, now I know, for example, that I went to Loves a lot. So I'm gonna type in the word Loves and I'm going to, so we probably did a couple things here. We probably got scales for $3.50, $13, maybe parking, maybe a shower. So anything, under a hundred dollars i'm going to say with job supplies because it more than likely was i'm not going to create a separate category for scales or a separate category for showers or a separate category maybe a separate category for parking but in general i'm just going to categorize all of this as job supplies if it's less than twenty dollars don't get hung up on it i try to keep my chart of accounts clean my profit and loss statement clean i don't like to have a ton of separate categories and then we have here $140, so this might have been repairs and maintenance. This might have been fuel. So we're going we're gonna to say that this was fuel. So you can see here, we can pay the same person, but we can categorize it differently. So it's important that you look at the receipt, or you talk to your driver, or you talk to your client, figure out what they're buying. And then finally, we're going to say that this one was repairs and maintenance just because it's $1,600, probably not fuel, probably not job supplies. We probably got some sort of repairs done on the truck at a Love's truck stop. Okay, so for the sake of time, like I said, probably no one's still watching this, but if you are, now we're done categorizing transactions. Now I'm going to show you two more things. So I always tell people bookkeeping is a three-step process. You got to categorize your transactions, which we just got done doing. I didn't do all of them, but you get the, you get the idea. You can probably do it on your own. Now we need to reconcile accounts. So in QuickBooks, go to the bottom left-hand corner and click on Reconcile. And I recommend that you reconcile your checking accounts, your credit card accounts, and your loan accounts. So in this Reconcile tab here, 
we're just going to choose the account that we want to reconcile. So like I said, bank accounts, credit card accounts, loan accounts. I'm just going to show you the checking account right here, for example. So you're going to want to look at your bank statement and do this every single month. So look at the bank statement. So for this example, we're going to look at the January bank statement. I'm not going to give real numbers because I don't have time. Just look at the ending balance in January 2022 and write down the date the ending date of that bank statement. So look at the balance and the date of the bank statement and then click start reconciling. Now QuickBooks is going to pull every single transaction from January 2022 and it's going to add up all the deposits, subtract out all the payments. So we have here, here's the beginning balance of the checking account minus all of the payments plus all of the deposits should equal the statement ending balance. In this example, it doesn't because I didn't do everything, but here's how you reconcile your accounts. Here's how you make sure everything penny for penny is perfectly accurate. Once everything is accurate and reconciled, you're gonna see a $0 difference and then you just click done or click save and then you, your accounts are reconciled. Now the final thing I'm gonna show you, this is your financial statement. So like I said, bookkeeping three-step process, categorize transactions, Reconcile your accounts. Now you're going to want to generate your financial statement. So we're going to look at two things here. We're going to look at your balance sheet. Now your balance sheet has your assets like your bank account, your trailer, your truck, your credit card is, an, is a liability. So after assets, we have liabilities. Your credit card accounts are liabilities. Your loans are liabilities. So the truck loan, the trailer loan, the credit card is all liabilities. And then we have equity. Your opening balance equity is maybe if you start doing bookkeeping in 2022 and you, you, but you did business in 2021 and you have a checking account with $10,000 in it, you're going to recognize an opening balance equity of that checking account of $10,000 on January 1st, 2022. Owner's investment, personal money I put into my business, owner's pay, business money that I take out and pay myself personally or pay another business, just an equity transfer. Retained earnings is your net income from the year before, and net income is obviously the difference between your revenue and your expenses in the current year. And you can look at your net income on your profit and loss, and that takes us to the final financial statement that I'm going to show you. You can look at your financial statement on a monthly basis, or you can look at it for all the dates. You can run the report, and you can see here, this is the golden ticket financial statement, your profit and loss. This is, shows you what you're going to owe taxes on. This shows you your income, top line, and then all of your expenses. You can see here all those categories we made, bank charges and contract labor and insurance and repairs and maintenance. That's where all of those categories show up on your profit and loss statement. That's why it's important that you accurately categorize things so that it makes sense for the business owner so that they can make informed financial decisions about their business. How much money do they make? How much money do they lose? How much money are they making? How much money are they going to have to pay taxes on? That's what everybody wants to know. So bookkeeping, three-step process, categorize transactions, reconcile your accounts, and then finally generate these financial statements. And then this is what you use to file your taxes at the end of the year. And this is what you use to give to your bank to apply for a new loan. I hope this video was helpful. I know it was crazy long. If you made it to the end, congratulations. And let me know if you want me to create tutorials for other industries. I'd be happy to show you how to do bookkeeping for software companies or marketing agencies or construction companies. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next video.